something else. Oh, uh, my turn to sing your okay. praises. I love oh boy. <laughs> I love it. I can't believe it was to the rhythm of Steven Universe. <laughs> wait a minute, as soon as- Wait, as soon as I, like, saw the Wii, I'm like, they did not fucking do that! I wasn't sure until it said, uh, uh like, the, I think the third or fourth line is when it kicked in for me. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Uh, Jesus. minding your own business in a, in a spying on your classmates way, when suddenly... Hey, Kaylin, you're sort of a loser sometimes, right? Ouch, bitch! <laughs> but you're my bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> sure? And you hang out with other losers like L Rory, right? Because Rory is a total loser. Who I happen to be... Who I happen to maybe be developing feelings for. I can't explain it. They are nowhere near as attractive or wealthy or wealthy or as ruthless as I am. And yet I find myself so inexplicably drawn to them. I think it's in their eyes. It's like it's like there's a real depth there. Like they are hiding some sort of secret. What do you think it is? Something wonderful or something totally lame? The secret behind Rory's eyes is the secret. That book has changed their life and their business sense and self-confidence is on point. Or the secret behind Rory's eyes, the secret of communism. <laughs> Pick your fucking poison. Pick my fucking poison, I guess. Rory doesn't believe in ownership of material goods or individual entrepreneurship of any kind. Okay, that'll be nice. The Secret? I loved that book. Any publication that puts me in a position to work to once again assert my superiority over others with hard work can win me over in a heartbeat. And any monster who reads that kind of book is out to get something for themselves. In this case, possibly me. I like a monster who isn't afraid to chase down what they want, and we know I'm not too easily won over. Maybe they have a chance with me after all. Vera and Rory, prom royalty. Nice. It has a nice ring to it. Thanks, Kaylin. No problem. Maybe they'll let you be part of the prom court, even if you're just a court jester or something. You gain plus- Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, trading places. Hell yeah. Everybody chooses an activity. Crossword puzzles. Damn it! I was gonna say puzzles, but okay. Um, playing video games. I don't know. Place orders decided based on how silly it would be if the next hottest dance move among millennials is based on mimicking this activity. I mean, people already do Fortnite dances, so you win. I was gonna say that doesn't matter. That's already happened. So, uh, cat, please don't be in the library. You are in the gym. Awesome. Um, library. Library? Okay. Yeah. That day you spend some time on the library PCs playing some good old online poker. Gambling seems like a stupid and dangerous decision. But who cares? This time it paid off, so fuck it. You gain plus two money. Give me back my fucking money. You see Miranda, Vera, and Polly gathered around a table in books. A table covered in books. Could they be studying? No way. I hereby call this meeting of boss ass bitches to order. I gathered all prior school yearbooks so we can have a clear list of everybody we're better than. Always the same with you. <laughs> oh shit. Hi, Joy. I think this is the most characters I've seen on screen at once. Damn. Who said that? Oh great, it's the coven. What are you three doing here? Um, studying? Because this is the library? At a school. You want to be Miranda? Guys, villains impersonating us. What? Jesus. What? What? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> God damn it! Oh. Don't you see, Vera? <laughs> Don't you see, Vera? These three are obviously our evil twins. The middle one is is the is mean and bossy like you. What are you talking about, Polly? We go to class with you. You wouldn't know if you three didn't spend all of your time doing stupid and mostly illegal stuff. I will fuck your tricks, evil bear. 
Are you implying the original Barret isn't some kind of evil herself? <laughs> Hello there! The one... The one on the right... Has glasses just like Polly! God. I need these to see. <laughs> and see? She's a- she's a dark skin! She's clearly Dark Polly! <laughs> whoa, Polly, just- whoa, Polly, just no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Bitches is one letter away from witches! Good <laughs> lord. Say, would you three mind studying somewhere else? You're upsetting my minions. <laughs> Fuck, apparently. Never. Good grades are the backbone of a bright future. We need all of this knowledge to save the world from the big bad. Oh boy, if you don't figure out a way to get the coven out of here, you might have to break up a brawl. Any ideas? You can either whip out your rooster, which is hate roosters, or chop up all the study tables with a big axe. Oh. I think the first one is euthanism. I just realized that. But, oh, I don't know what stat know what this is. Um, I think the bottom one would be bold. Unless, unless the first one is charm, I, I don't... I'm going with the first one. Please do not be charm. That's all I ask. Oh, okay, thank god it's farts. Oh, no. <laughs> Get that filthy cock away. Ah, uh, called it. Good night, everybody. Good thinking. Which is oh. repelled by the rooster as it is a symbol of the dawn. No, roosters are just mean and we don't want to catch any diseases. Fine, we're leaving. Bye, Joy. <laughs> I'm not reading that. <laughs> I refuse. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> That's fair. You. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I too love it. <laughs> as. As we say in my kingdom, the chicken is the tuna of, of the land. Hmm. <laughs> Her face says it all. Yeah. All right, they're gone. You can put your cock away. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Why? Though you did use him quite skillfully. Vera's so impressed that she lets you sit on the first meeting of the boss-ass bitches. You all throw so much shade, your rooster decides it's nighttime and goes to sleep. You gain plus two fun and plus one boldness. Nice. Jesus Christ. Oh. Okay. Boldness. That day you skip class and just hang out in the bathrooms because you respect no authority. But you don't stop there. You want the world to know how reckless you are for the rest of eternity. So you do some graffiti on the wall. No way. The graffiti says, I'm bold as fuck. And you know what? It turns out the wall is a magical wall that grants wishes. What a wall. A deep voice resounds from within the wall and says, well, not bold as fuck, but maybe a bit bold. And then you gain plus two boldness. Oh boy, that's an opinionated wall. Anyway, lucky you. It's all nice. Oh boy. Oh, it's all nice. To oh boy. It's always nice to see your friend succeed. And by the increase in employees and viewers, a legal law firm, she's clearly doing well. Oh no. You wanna be calculus? What? Why is calculus here? Oh dear lord. Hello, friend Caitlin. Have you come to this place for carb for carbon based life forms to rid themselves of their waste in order to file to file a lawsuit which I am told is is the primary function of of this location. Calculester is an ideal secretary as he loves to help and can perform research instantaneously and and type an infinity infinity number of words per minute. Oh. Fair enough. And I'm the ideal apprentice because for the last time, Zoe, you are not my apprentice because you have no interest in my law practice or helping me acquire vast sums of money. Or plus money. You're clearly only here to research another one of your stupid fan fictions. My spiky, my spooky high court legal counsel and you guilty of love is not stupid. Clearly, you're worried, worried, 
taking me on would lend to a lawyer apprentice love story. Oh my. That is not the case. <laughs> OMG, is that because you're already involved in a secret lawyer secretary love story with Calculester? Oi, the robot can't have my bitch. Fuck off. I demand to speak to a lawyer in Oh yeah. Uh. You have come to the right place, friend Dahlia. As everyone knows, bathrooms aren't the most common location to take care of le take care of legal problems. You sweet summer long, robot. I love it. For far too long I've attempted literal battle to claim the eighth circle of hell from the LeVay clan. So now I attempt to defeat them in legal battle. Dahlia, my wealthy friend, I would be more than happy to assist. But Damien is our friend. Eh. Sounds like repressed sexual sounds like repressed sexual tension to me. The demon boy is not allowed to have my snake waifu. Fuck off! <laughs> Everything sounds like repressed sexual tension to you. Chew that. I Oof. brought with me this chest full of the spoils of war. Prepared to pay any price for your legal advice. Friend Dahlia, a quick search has informed me that the what the hell? Aquino clan? Aquino, yeah. Aqu Aquino clan has never controlled the eighth ring of hell. A circle of hell. I said ring of hell thinking That's fucking funny. hell of a boss. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> and that the LeVay clan claimed it quite fairly. It, it would seem that you have little to no claim on what is rightfully friend, rightfully friend Damien's kingdom. Buh -buh 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 zip it, Robo Secretary. You know nothing about the law, and there is little to no chance that Dahlia is not loaded. And I'm therefore happy to take her on as a client for a large sum of plus money. You've chosen the right side, fiendish Gorgon. What is the plan for my legal victory? The plan? Ah, yes, the plan. Which I have one of, because I am very qualified lawyer. And your case for which... And your case, for which you have absolutely no legal grounds whatsoever, certainly will be unwinnable. Will certainly be winnable. We just need to, um... <laughs> bring a surprise witness or shout objection over and over again. Oh, I don't know what, what these would be. Uh, uh... I think... Objection might be... Might be fun. That might be fun or bold. I think that... I can see it being either. I think it might be fun. I'm gonna choose it. Damn it, it was bold. Ah, oh, uh, no. so the first one must have been creativity. Damn. Oh no, this is gonna hurt me. I'm scared to see where this ends up. Yes, exactly. Like at worst, it takes out. At worst, it takes out fun because you kind of need creativity. Yeah. If Caitlin had jumped in, I highly, a high, I, a highly qualified loyal, would have suggested just the same thing. But friend Vera, it would seem my database suggests that objection would only be used in certain objection. <laughs> oh my! Poor God. calculus, or he's just trying to be a good boy. Ah fuck! <laughs> I'm starting to think this law practice based out of a high school bathroom may not be legitimate. Gee, what was your first indication? Are you even a nice going, Kayla? Are you even a lawyer? I guess what? I guess what? Now you're a client. I'm a client? What? Apparently being a client costs you three- Oh! Oh, oh, that just cost me- Okay, that- Yeah, I was gonna say, that's like best case scenario. Oh, thank god. Historical figure. Um, historical figure. Rosa Parks. Oh, nice choice. Um... Fitting. Teddy Roosevelt. Nice. Picture this. Five years ago, these historical figures time traveled to our times, and now they live in present time. Now only one of them can remain here, and who stays will be decided through a series of Pokemon battles. Player orders decided based on who would win the Pokemon. A Pokemon battle between Teddy Roosevelt and, po and Rosa Parks. <sighs> Ooh. Huh. Ooh. I don't know who would win that. Me neither. Should we just click random on this one? Because that seems like a fair fight. I don't know who would win. Yeah, random. I'm going first. Okay, you go first. 
Oh crap, we're getting closer to the end. Let's go. <laughs> the Slayer. Oh, Ruffy! Oh, Ruffy! Calculuster is enjoying a nice, quiet lunchtime charge when Zoe interrupts his reverie with a question. Hey, hey Calculuster, I'm making a quiz so students can figure out which spooky high vending machines they are. You're friends with the vending machines. Okay. I am friends with every person, friend Zoe. But, like, are the vending machines people? That you're friends with? That is rather... That is a rather insulting question. Yes, vending machines are people, and yes, I am friends with them. <laughs> Poor calculus, oh, sir. Do vending machines have feelings? Of course they have feelings. Which feelings? <laughs> I... Do not know. I am a terrible friend. <laughs> no! Calculus, oh, don't be sad! <laughs> we can figure this out together for my quiz. But how can we talk to the vending machines about their fa feelings? Use pure logic, Cal. Vending machines seem to give away their... Seem to give things away when you put money in them. So put coins and ask them about their feelings. Just look up their manuals online. <laughs> I love conducting obsessive online research on all my favorite topics. Don't you, Zoe? Oh. Oh god. Did someone say obsessively on learned research? Yes. It was Caitlyn. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to sound like a fucking robot and yeah. I'm failing miserably. <laughs> I think you're doing fine. Let's do it, Calculester. Pull up the manuals. Manuals acquired. Opening section 30... 23D. <laughs> Discerning your vending machine's mood. <laughs> It says here that there is an there is an analog switch on the back of each vending machine that set that sets its emotional state. Let's go look. Huh? It looks like they're all set to crushing despair. <laughs> oh my god! Why are they set to crushing despair? What the fuck? That seems to be the factory default. Why is that the default? Should we change, should we change it? Best not to tamper with factory defaults. Okay, hey Keenan, as long as we're doing exhaustive online research, want to go down an online and want want to go down an online encycl encyclopedia TM hole with me? There's not a hole you wouldn't go down with Zoe. You start a vet at vending machine emotional states and end up at dark rituals specifically involving cabbage. All right. Very specific. Yeah. Oh, Vera. <laughs> You take your seat, and if you didn't know any better, you would say that it seems like Vera and Polly are almost interested in their phones, or more interested in their phones than they are in you. And you do, and you do know better, and you know that yes, that is exactly what's happening right now. Hey there. It's nothing personal, Rory. It's just that Polly and I are very engrossed in texting our financial slave. Yay! Yeah, it's pretty hard to compete with. With some guys who's fa no <laughs> skipping that word is buying and is anything you want that's my blank too I refuse <laughs> no <laughs> not buying things for people having people buy things for me duh good good thing he's rich enough to take care of both of us you know you know what they say a true friendship is sharing secrets and financial slaves. Still, I do worry that this arrangement might not be sustainable. What happens if he runs out of money? Or our cash flow instantly stops besides being besides being handed everything you want on a platter. In this case, the platter being an online money transferring platform. Is is almost boring? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I get that. It's it's a less boring it's less it's a less boring when you're you're on as much acid as I am right now. But I see I see what you mean. If we could somehow turn At least she acknowledges she's on something. <laughs> yeah. If we could somehow turn this into a business venture, then maybe it would get in, in 
Maybe it would get interesting and we could continue to profit. Even after he's gone broke from catering to our every whim. I mean... How interested do you think business actually is? Since he's... Since he's so obsessed with us, we should... We should just tell him to do something totally insane and see... And see if he does it. I don't know. A weirdo giving away his money and getting into hijinks is great and all, but I want to start making real money. And I think money is fine and all, but my favorite currency is chaos. Hmm. Any D and D fucking player. Yeah. Hmm. Seems like the ladies are at a very exciting crossroads. Maybe a random bystander can give them a nudge in the right direction. You can easily grow this arrangement into a business. Just escalate and delegate. Have the financial slave go and acquire his own financial slave to give him money, and then and have that financial slave go and find a financial slave <laughs> start a Tell him to marry Or t <laughs> God. Yeah. Vera, gimme. Aha. That would increase our income exponentially immediately. Which are two of my absolute favorite adverbs when it comes to monetary gain. Me. One financial slave between the two of us is already strangely a lot to handle, so managing an army of them sounds draining. But as long as it's a pure, it's a pyramid scheme, and we're at the top of the pyramid, we don't have to do, we don't have to actually deal with the low lives. Who cares? I think I'll, I'll just check, check on my toilet line. <laughs> don't worry about her. Polly wouldn't know a good business idea if it slapped her on the ass. Which happened one time, actually, but it's a long story, so forget it. Anyway, Oof. we can tell people in we tell people in order to become a, official certified financial slaves that they have to buy a kit of supplies. And they start as a, that and they'll start a dirt slave and then if they be, get five financial slaves under them, they become a pathetic ground slave. And then can work their way all the way to gold, diamond, platinum, salcho, mocha, grand, supreme slave. This was a great idea, Rory. We should go write the business plan together and <laughs> prepare for profit. Did did Vera just say she wants to profit with you? Holy shit. Vera sharing her cash flow is like the third base for her. Awesome. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.